you're going to tuck it into a nice place. When you set it down, if it's set really well, it might go off. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to set it again and again until it sits. But you want it, you don't want it stuck open so that the animal walks in, eats all the bait and leaves. You want it to trip. Okay. We are in the White Mountains in Arizona along the West Fork of the Black River. This is one of the best spots in the state of Arizona where we have New Mexico jumping mice. It is listed as endangered under the Endangered Species Act. Um, it was listed back in 2014, so somewhat recently. Well, it looks dry out here compared to what I've often seen this time of year. Maybe we'll put one there and we'll put two here. You want to stick one over there? So we usually start trapping down in this area. I had a nest of a jumping mouse right over there. You could put the trap in here, but I'd probably put the flag so you, you could see it from the stream. We try to stay in the water because we don't want to trample the habitat that the jumping mice are using. They are setting Sherman traps and also setting flags so we can find them later and also identify the traps so we know which individuals come from which traps. Should be 32. Doing the same 200 traps in the same area, the same system every year gets you an idea of what the trend in the population is doing. So we can at least get an idea whether it's going up or down, even though we may not know exactly how many animals are here. But jumping mice are kind of an up and comer in the endangered species world. So it has just been so much fun to learn so many things that we didn't know. And working with NAU, to find and learn all of this stuff has just been really exciting. And just so you know about every plant that you see flowering, they will feed on. And when we were radio tracking, we would see them sitting on these flowers, eating the seeds at night. We have learned so much about their diet, home range sizes, where they hibernate. Habitat is really what's important for this mouse. This is really good quality habitat. This um, stream is probably one of the best quality streams that we have for jumping mice in this area. What do they like? Tall vegetation, two feet and taller. This is what they love. These guys travel through the vegetation. They will you know, pull off a bunch of seed heads and eat something up and then go on to the next one. They are really agile. They're good at swimming. They're good at jumping. They're good at climbing. Um, and they're good at, I call them ninjas sometimes because they can sneak through the vegetation without you even seeing them they do not tolerate the heat well. So we do not want to capture them early. We're going to wait until just before the sun goes down before we actually put the bait and open the traps up completely. Steel cut oats, unsalted peanuts, those are usually things that we will bait the trap with. They're metal traps, so anything sitting in the sun is just going to turn into a little oven for them with if, if we don't get them checked early. So we will be here as the sun comes up and checking the traps immediately. Okay. No, it'll so all be here. This, but okay. Every animal, but Every animal just goes Pima, Jumper, etc. Correct. Straight down. Yes. So we split into two teams, and half of them have gone upstream to start at the 200 end. The other half of us are here and we're going to start at number one and we're going to meet in the middle at 100 and start processing jumpers. We're just going to go down to the stream, start opening traps, figure out what's in them. Probably going to be a lot of deer mice and voles. And we're going to start off with a jumping mouse. No. Oh, two, well, back to back. Number one, number two, we've got Zapis. Scientific name for jumping, New Mexico jumping mice is Zapis luteus luteus. So you might hear us call them Zapis throughout the day. I got a Paramiscus, a deer mouse. Paramiscus maniculatus is what we go by, so it's a Pima. P-E-M-A. P-E-M-A, yes. So all we're going to do is figure out whether or not it's a boy or a girl, and if it shows any reproductive condition. Yeah, that's a male. I would say a little bit scrotal. 31 is open but empty. So this one's a girl. Oh, so I didn't realize, okay. I have four Zavis, <laughs> four jumpers.
Yep, yep. new mouse. This is mouse plus bag. Um, and so you could just remind, we still need tail length, hind foot, and ear length. We need the weight and sex, age, and reproduction. So you can just remind them of that. 31.7. Tails, one, 18. So they are amazing. You know, these little tiny animals, these jumping mice weigh between 14 and 30 grams, depending on the time of year. 28.3. And they hibernate for up to nine months of the year. So they have three months to come out and have a chance to have young, to feed and gain weight for going into hibernation, and then they go into hibernation. It's just, they're just amazing. So we are putting a passive integrated transponder or a pit tag in them so we can identify them again in the future. We got a recap. <laughs> So these are all the clips of the ones that we checked this morning. So we make sure that we checked all of them and we aren't leaving any critters in the traps during the day. <laughs> After we process the mice, we want them to have a little bit of time to calm down and then we'll take them back to where we captured them and we'll release them at the same site. We just finished up our first day of trapping, so we were able to catch 15 jumping mice today, three of them being recaptures from previous years. We have such a great population of jumping mice here. It's been a great area to do a lot of work. <laughs>